innovation relies on your contribution for its success. So too do the other challenges that farming faces. The future of Fonterra is one of these. Fonterra has a big impact on New Zealand's fortunes and it plays a big uh, part in the fortunes of our country. So we want it to have a structure that puts it in as strong a position as possible to maximise its opportunities. Fonterra's capital structural proposals are currently being voted on by shareholders. And I hope that progress is going through, uh, the process it is going through will bring about the changes that Fonterra and New Zealand needs to make the most of our opportunities in dairying. Similarly, we want to see meat farmers taking ownership of the problems their industry is grappling with. I'm pleased that the recent Silver Fern Farms capital raising will enable the company to reduce its redemption risk and pay down some debt. But this action won't address the wider concerns the meat sector faces. In a speech I made to the Meat Industry Association a few months ago, I said that the government wants to see the players in the industry are looking for common ground and working together where this makes sense. I pointed out that if change in the industry is to be successful, it must come from the industry and not from government. But I also said that if the industry comes up with a plan that has the support of farmers, we will see what we can do to make sure it works. Your influence is absolutely critical to resolving the problems in the meat industry, and I encourage you to exert it. In the wool sector, the government's approach has been to facilitate industry discussion with David Carter leading formal discussions in recent months. And I hope that wool farmers will get behind this process. Your contribution is also vitally important when it comes to meeting the changing expectations of your customers. The most obvious example of this is around greenhouse gas emissions. The government is taking important steps to protect New Zealand's environmental credentials and ensure that we meet our international obligations on climate change. As I mentioned, we're pushing hard to establish a global alliance on agricultural greenhouse gas emissions. We set a 2020 target range for emissions reductions of 10 to 20% below 1990 levels by 2020. And we are revising the emissions trading scheme to make sure it balances our economic opportunities with our environmental responsibilities. I know that there is disagreement among some of your members about the ETS and our commitment to including farming in it, especially since Australia has announced that agriculture will not be part of its ETS. Nick is going to address in some detail those points tomorrow, but I want to make a couple of important points today. Firstly, responding to climate change is not an easy issue for any government anywhere in the world. It is one of the most difficult policy decisions and policy areas that governments around the world are grappling with. And as a trading nation, we simply cannot afford to get it wrong. Our international reputation with overseas consumers is at stake. Secondly, we don't want to unduly disadvantage New Zealand farmers. We believe that Labor's scheme would have done just that. It's one of the reasons why we're amending the ETS. We delayed the entry of agriculture until 2015, introduced a far more gentle abatement rate, and invested heavily in the Primary Growth Partnership and the Global Alliance. The results of our changes is that the cost of agricultural methane and nitrate oxide for the average farmer by 2030 will be in the order of $3,000 a year. You need to compare that with the $30,000 a year it would have been under Labor. Thirdly, we need to be very careful about comparing our farming sector with Australia. Agricultural accounts for just 16% of Australia's emissions. In New Zealand's case, it's 48%. Since 2000, their agricultural emissions have actually declined by 7%. Ours have grown significantly. So it's easier for Australia to reduce emissions while excluding agriculture than it is for New Zealand. That's just a fact of life. It's also worth noting that depending on what happens in Copenhagen, Australia may have to subject their farming sector to much more stringent regulations because they've excluded agriculture from their ETS. Finally, it's important we realise that in the end it won't be the emissions trading scheme, um, an international agreement on climate change, or the United Nations 
that damages New Zealand's agricultural sector. It is our customers around the world, in Britain, in Europe, in the United States, and in the growing markets of Asia, who have the ultimate power to damage or enrich our farming sector and our economy. A few months ago, Waitrose banned fish that deemed to be either overfished species or harvested by what they considered to be irresponsible fishing methods such as bottom trawling. Bottom trawling happens to be the method that New Zealand hokey is fished by. So, our hokey was banned. You'd imagine that Waitrose costs went up and that they were unable to find alternative supplies for some fish species. So the question you might want to ask yourself is, did they suffer commercial <coughs> consequences? Well, the answer to that is no. The move was a big commercial success. Customers rewarded them for delivering products to the standards they wanted. And for me, the lesson from this is very clear. While we as a government may have some sway over access to overseas markets, we can't force the consumers in those markets to buy our products, especially if they think our, our products do not measure up to their environmental standards. But we can help protect against that possibility. That's what we believe our emissions trading scheme does, and I hope that you'll see it in that light and consider it in that light, because it's a very serious business for your products. So ladies and gentlemen, our farmers produce some of the best food in the world, and we face some great prospects in the years ahead. But we also face real challenges. The government is working hard to make the most of these opportunities and the most of those challenges. But we can't do it alone. We need you to help invest in innovation, to push for changes in Fonterra and the meat industry, and to realise that tackling climate change can bring advantages if, they, if we have the courage to seek them. Thank you very much.